Hello spores! I'm Gilly the Mushroom Mother and as you can see, I'm a 3D VTuber. While some of the time I use full body motion capture to move my model, I also like to take it easy sometimes and record at my desk, using just an iPhone for tracking. But I often hear people complain that 3D VTubers are stiff and lifeless compared to live 2D. So for the past few years, I've been working on techniques to make 3D models more bouncy and expressive. The result of all this work is my Live 2D movement system for Warudo, which you can download from the link in the description. For this tutorial, I'm assuming you already have Warudo installed and a version of your model that works in Warudo. If you need help with those things, check out the Warudo Discord. There's a great tutorials channel and a friendly community ready to help answer your questions. And I have one final request before we get started. If you like my work, please subscribe to my channel. It helps me reach more people and encourages me to make more Warudo content. With that out of the way, let's get started. Step one, download and extract the files anywhere you want. Inside the downloads folder is fine. Then in Warudo, click the paw print menu and choose open data folder to open your streaming assets folder in a new window. Drag all of the folders from the file you just downloaded and drop them directly onto the streaming assets window, which will add all the files to the proper folders automatically. Step two, open the demo scene by clicking on the Warudo paw print menu again and choosing open scene, then selecting Gilly's live 2D movement. Choose either eye facial mocap or media pipe depending on the tracker that you use. This will open the working scene file that contains all the assets, blueprints, and settings that make this movement system work. If you have your tracker turned on, you should already see the character moving. At this point, I recommend you duplicate the scene by going into the paw print menu again and selecting Save Scene As. Give it whatever name you want. This just ensures that you will always have the original scene to go back to in case you accidentally break something and don't know how to fix it. Step three, set up your avatar by going to the character asset and choosing your avatar from the source dropdown. Unless your character is super short, like Shapilka, you'll need to adjust the cameras. Just click on wide camera and then move and zoom until it looks good. Then do the same for main camera and corner camera. Finally, check to see whether your eyes and mouth are moving properly. If they look weird, go back to your face tracker asset, which will be called either eye facial mocap or media pipe, and scroll down to this section with a bunch of toggles. Make sure these are set correctly depending on whether your model uses bones or blend shapes for eye movement, and whether it has VRM look blend shapes. If you're not sure what your model has, just Try all the options, one of the combinations should look correct. That's it for setup. Now, I know you want to customize everything, but I need to mention some important things before we get to fine tuning the movements. In the scene, you'll see left foot and right foot anchors. You cannot delete these. In 3D animation, inverse kinematics, or IK, is the science of saying, if the feet are here and the hips are here, then the leg must be bent like this. Here in Warudo, these foot anchors drive the leg IK, and they're not optional. But they make things a bit complicated. For example, if you want to move your character, you can't just drag the character asset. Since its feet are essentially nailed to the floor, it'll just look weird. Instead, drag the character mover anchor, which moves the character as well as both foot anchors at the same time. And because the feet are fixed in place, you're probably wondering how ragdolling and animations are going to work since both will need to move the feet. Don't worry, I have a solution for that too. Go to the blueprints tab and then take a peek at free my feet. This function disables the foot IK so you can just put a flow function node in front of any other blueprint and another one with the function fix my feet at the end to temporarily disable and then re-enable the foot IK. To make things even easier, I made functions for instant ragdolling or animations. Anywhere you need a ragdoll, just drop in the ragdoll function and it will do everything. Free the feet, launch your character into the stratosphere, and then fix its feet all with a single node. Same thing for animations, just stick a flow function node with the play animation function selected, plug in your desired animation source, and it will take care of everything. Phew! With that out of the way, we can finally get to customizing the movements. First, test the movements and take notes. Look left and right, 
look up and down, tilt your head side to side, and lean sideways and forwards. See if you like how your avatar moves or if there's anything you'd like to adjust. If the body movement is too intense overall and you want something subtler, go to your face tracker asset and scroll down to the pendulum section. Lower the pendulum physics intensity slider for more subtle movements and raise it if you want them to be more pronounced. But this changes the strength of all the pendulums and maybe you want to edit them individually. If the hips are swaying too much, Expand the three pendulums labeled Z body and drag the weight sliders down. Make sure leg length L and R have the same value. If you don't want hip sway at all, simply set enabled to no for all three pendulums. If the arms are too flappy, expand XZ arms and drag the weight slider. If the forward lean is too dramatic, first try disabling or reducing the lean plus pendulum. But please be sure to disable it while you're not leaning, otherwise you'll get stuck with a giant head. If you don't want to lean forward at all, disable both lean and lean plus. If your character appears to be looking at the floor when you lean forward, go into the lean pendulum and scroll down to affected bones and child transforms. Expand neck minus 80 and then set intensity to a lower number such as negative 90 or negative 100 until it looks right. If you want to change the angle of your character's feet, you can do that too. VTubers are often pigeon-toed because the artists want to show more details of the character's shoes, but you might not like that. Or maybe you want to be more pigeon-toed. Hey, I don't judge. Go to the Blueprints tab and then open Gilly's Steppies. This may look like a nightmare to you, but it controls both the sidestepping animation and the tiptoes animation. Don't worry, you don't have to know anything about Blueprints. Just open the Properties tab in the right-hand sidebar, and you'll see foot rotation at the top with the number 4 under it. Make it 0 for straight ahead feet, or a higher number for more pigeon toe. You could also set a negative number if you want your feet to face out. But be warned, your foot rotation also affects your knee rotation. Finally, you can control how much your character is crouching. You might have noticed by now that your character's knees are slightly bent, even when you're looking straight ahead. I set it this way because I like a lot of up and down bounce, and much like in real life, if your character's knees are straight and locked, it takes a lot more activation energy to start bending them. But if you want to straighten up, go into the Gillies Transforms blueprint. In the Properties tab, you'll see Crouch, which contains a very small negative number. Changing it to zero would make your legs painfully straight, and negative 0.2 would make you crouch even more, so make very small adjustments here if needed. And that's it! Your character's movement is now customized exactly the way you like, and they should be bobbing and swaying just like a live 2D avatar. If you like this project, please consider adding me to your credits section so other 3D VTubers can find it too. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.